Merry Christmas, one and all. Lovely. But uh, microphones, electronics and uh, liquids. I'd like to share with you my experiences buying microphones on eBay. Over the years I've bought one or two. Generally, I've been impressed. M600 one of the first I had an issue with this one and an earlier one so with two of them these are very difficult to come by first one Germany uh, advertised it's fair condition working good seller from what I could see a microphone person uh, the switch not working these switches not working is I've noticed a few times they're magnetic read switches that Bayer Dynamic used and I think they can deteriorate uh, I'm not quite sure how it works you, you turn this and there's a magnet in it and I think there's in a excuse me in a a glass container filled with an inert gas there's sort of uh, two metal reeds and when you turn the switch it creates a contact what's nice about the way they do it is that the signal doesn't flow through the contact but the contact shorts out the microphone. So if they deteriorate, your signal's not going to deteriorate. You might find it's intermittent on and off. When they fail, not such a good thing perhaps, when they fail, they seem to fail in the off position. So when they fail, the microphone will be off. You can remove this, disconnect one of the cables, and this is out of circuit so the microphone will work which is how this one is, but we'll come to that in a bit. So the first one I bought, switch wasn't working, but in good condition. It arrived, and it was dead. I uh, took the risk. Maybe I shouldn't have done it. It worked out in the end, but and I, I removed these screws. Oh, it's a difficult microphone to come by. I thought, if I can make it work, if it's something simple, obvious, like a wire, and I can make it work, then I keep it because you know, I'm going to wait again for another year or whatever. So I took the top off very carefully. Couldn't see any issue there. I knew the switch wasn't working, so I thought, hmm. So I removed the switch very carefully and saw it had been disconnected. I tried running a, I tried a few things just with a wire and a jumper, and I just couldn't make it work. So I put it back together as it was. Got in touch with the person. Uh, who was very surprised, and uh, sent it back. Interestingly, when I sent it back, I, had to, I got, went through eBay with all this. Everything was exchanged, and they said, send it back. Uh, when he got it, he said, oh, you've dismantled it. Oh, wow. So I, I told him. I took the top off to look, put the top back on. Couldn't see any, there were no wires. The, the wire from the diaphragm wasn't disconnected. All the solder joints looked good. I said I took the switch off and I had a look. It was disconnected, not working. I put it back and he sent me a photograph saying that you've butchered it or something. Uh, but the photograph he sent me wasn't anything to do with these. It was down here and he showed me a wire missing. He sent it to his mic guy. Long and short of it is they fixed it and got the switch working. I don't know how. I wish he'd told me because I did it on this. So maybe I shouldn't have done that. Don't know. Uh, I got a refund for the mic. He sold it again. Uh, I lost the postage. So, okay. Stay on this one then. This is another that came up then a year, a year or a half later in England, which is always easier if you've got to send things back. And lovely condition, fully working. It arrived and it was dead. I thought, oh no. Having should have learnt my lesson than before, but I thought I know these switches only because several on eBay uh, of these older mics they say the switch doesn't work. So I thought it's worth uh, to took the switch off carefully, unsoldered one cable, and it worked. So it was a switch. I believe the guy that it was working when he posted it. So in both those examples, then 
Was it vibration during the post? Both the guys seem honest. It's probably not a good idea to fiddle about with microphones if you're going to send them back, but just with these two, well, actually, and there's another one as well. Um, I thought it was worth it because otherwise you know, I, I wanted these and they're, they're, they seem to be rare. So anyway, so this one works without the switch, which is fine for me. And okay, I've got to sell it. I've got to sell it with the switch not working, so maybe I get less. But actually, it was very inexpensive. Nobody was interested or whatever. That's that one. This is one of the earlier ones examples I had, which is a fantastic condition by a Dynamic M88 for another microphone seller in Germany. Turned up. Beautiful, looks unused. Um, I tried it. Sounded fine, except when I got louder with the low notes, there was a rattle along with my voice. These sometimes are known for used for, for bass drums and you can blow the diaphragm. So I was thinking, oh, is the diaphragm blown? Again, I thought it's worth a shot. <laughs> Shouldn't. Took the screws off, took the top off. And it's just the bits of foam they use for shock absorption. Foam in these things, oh, foam is always gone. There were bits of the foam around the place. I don't know, so I got a pair of tweezers. I picked the foam out with a toothpick as well, got rid of any of the bits of foam I could see, put it back together, and it worked fine. The foam wasn't touching the diaphragm. It was round the edge. I don't know, there's vents and stuff. So I was a little bit sceptical because I thought, well, if I'd seen something obvious, I mean, the little bits of foam round... Mm, but maybe they were rattling with the lower notes and causing something. It's been fine ever since, so I guess I have to either assume that's the case or it's just coincidence. So lovely, works perfectly. Um, if I hadn't done that, might have been chance, as I say, I'd have had to have sent it back. And because it was so lovely, I was... Um, mm. Aha. Those two I'm going to call innocent. This one, not so innocent. If I can get it. Oh, this one's interesting as well. No, this one. This is a Bayer a ribbon mic. What the fellow said about this is that he'd got it from new. As soon as he used it, it sounded raspy. He sent it back to Bayer Dynamic. They replaced the ribbon sent it back and in the time it took to do that he'd bought another microphone so it was unused it arrived and i noticed a flat there and a little flat there which must have come from dropping so that story doesn't sound right to me he, maybe he did or maybe he just used it once and dropped it twice when he used it once and but didn't mention that Took the top off again. I could see the ribbon housing and I could see a clear type glue. I've got another one of these which I bought brand new and I took the top off that and looked and the cement that was used was not the same and a little bit um, not too tidily applied. It didn't matter. but So I wonder, did Bayer really do that? Maybe dropped it and the ribbon um, housing, the ribbon thing that holds the whole ribbon thing had come displaced. I think that's more likely. Anyway... It was firm, the ribbon thing. It sounded fine. I compared the two mics. It sounded fine. So I'd got one with a slight dent in it, but uh, I got in touch with him and said, listen, da -da 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 -da. I got a long, angry um, reply. I thought, well, it's America again. I'm not going to send it back. But I looked on his original listing, and I looked at his photographs. I hadn't spotted it originally, but when I looked closely on his, I could see a flat in his photograph. So I downloaded the photograph, put a ring around it, and sent it to him and said, but look, this is your listing. His tone changed completely, which, you know, you've been found out, haven't you? What are you going to say about that? Anyway, in the end, I, I said, I'd taken the top off as before. You can put a rounded end of a screwdriver or something in a vise, and then with a rubber mallet, tap the dents out. So there we go. So the dents out. Ooh, maybe a tiny bit there, but you can't see it. So that one was, but it works fine. It sounds identical to the other one. No problems, but a little bit. This one, I 
good health. This one I can see how wars might start. Have I got the right one? Yes. Bayer Dynamic M88. Older, lovely condition. And by a tiny margin, the sweetest of the M88s. So I'm a happy man. But the story was a bit involved. Came from Spain from a studio. Turned up. I plugged it in. And it sounded okay, a little bit quieter than my others, but was accompanied by a buzz, a hum. Oh, here we go. Uh, tried a different cable, all the, th all the things you might do. I tried it on a different desk. For some reason, I was just trying it on everything just to see. And I noticed that one of them has global phantom power or something, whatever I had, it had phantom power, which shouldn't harm these, they're fine with it. But with anything with phantom, the, the buzz was different on different inputs, mostly unaccept on one, almost acceptable, but not really. But on others, just completely unusable. Anything with phantom power, forget it. So, I don't know. Got in touch with them. They said, no, it works fine, works fine. I suspected this. This is an early one which had a Tushel connector, DIN. And this is a biodynamic replacement XLR. So I thought, somebody's replaced it. Is the wiring good? Is the trans Has the transport done something? So, I'm afraid, yes. I unscrewed it. And when I looked, I noticed the three pins here with only two wires connected. The other pin had solder on it. So it had been connected before. So my friend Tim Beaton, I sent him some photographs and um, he looked at it and said, uh, it's been wired for unbalanced. He said, I'm pretty sure if you remove that cable and put it to the other pin, then you'd have three connections. Two cables were going to one pin. He said, I bet you it works. So I thought, here's a risk. Oh, but before I did that, in the exchanges we had back and forth, I said they were doubting me somewhere. I said, well, look, I sent them to my website, The Magic of the Microphone. I said, look, have a look there. You know, I'm not not bigging myself up, but I've, you know, I've got a few microphones. And I know when one doesn't work, I hope. But then they said, ah, how do I know that you don't want parts from this one to repair one of your others? Uh, really, I go to that trouble, but uh, there you go. Anyway, I persisted with it. I did what my friend said. To what Tim said and removed it and wired it there, cleaned it up whilst I did it because it's sold all over the place and nice and clean. Worked perfectly. So that worked out right. I mean, if you're a person that that doesn't can't hasn't isn't a bit handy with these things, that would have been uh, three or four instances where you'd have had to send it back. eBay are quite good about that. This one, I wonder what eBay would have made of it because if you used it with a jack unbalanced i'm sure it worked fine they must have been using it in spain with a jack somebody must have wired it that way because there was solder on the other pin so somebody must have taken that wire off that pin and put it on the other one deliberately uh, probably to make it probably using it with a jack maybe they're using it as a talkback mic in the studio or something so uh i thought they uh, mentioned well maybe they didn't know you know so what would it be though i've sent it back to them to spain they'd have tested it if they tested it in the same way they'd have said it works fine What's wrong with you? Sent it back to me. And, you know, I was, would have, you can see how a war could start with that. Sorted. So in the end, I bought quite a few microphones. In the end, I'm thinking, it's okay. I haven't had a real disaster yet. But I think, bearing in mind all that, what you might do as a kind of a system I've got a list here, which I'll say, some of these are obvious. I'd say check the listing and photos quite carefully, obviously. Ask any questions and ask for more photos if you have any reason to feel that you want to do that. Most of you, you can get 12 free photos on eBay now and it's with a microphone. How many? You don't need 12, do you? But just in case. Uh, something that 
I've been doing, which I think is a good idea, we've all got phones and stuff now, I would video the unboxing. When it arrives, have your microphone and something to test the new one with, so you can just take your microphone off and plug a new one. So just when it comes there, say hi, the microphone's arrived, thanks very much, and just video you cutting it open, everything you do, take it out, test your your own microphone that you've got there, unplug it, put theirs on, and test it. They could still say, oh, you would already opened the box and fiddled about and taken parts out and all this fit and you just made a video like that. But at least it gives you something to go by. And if you, you don't need it, hopefully you won't, you just delete it. But at least it gives you something and something for your memory as well if further on we can't remember what the situation was. So that's what I'd recommend. doesn't cost you anything, bit of time. A few things to bear in mind. Oh, Un momento, por favor. Merry Christmas. Have I said that? It's not Christmas yet, but might as well get in early, eh? Now, let's see what that does. Rough. Um, This one I find interesting. Hopefully you will. You might not. A biodynamic M500, but black. Hmm, I thought. And an old one. Again, the replacement uh, XLR fitting. They did overlap the Tushel and the XLR for a while. So because it's it would have been a Tushel uh, connector there, it doesn't mean it's, it means it's old, but you could have an XLR that's slightly older because there was an overlap period where there were, you could buy either and then the Tushel were phased out. So it means it is an old one anyway. So I was interested in the old one, and because it's, it's black as well. This arrived, lovely condition, fantastic. All, all good. Tested it with the other M500s. Sounded nice and clean and clear, and with that, I like them. I've been using the M500s recently, and they are an enjoyable quality mic. It's got a shape to them, you look at the review. But every now and then it's nice just to have a little bit of a a shape to things. It's quite fun. Um, but this one, uh, I've done a comparison and you'll, you'll notice this one's in there. The bass just wasn't there. What bass there was, was clean, wasn't distorted. I'm thinking the ribbon can't be gone, surely, because... So, I think again, I probably took the top off and had a look. I've got something else to tell you as well. And, nope. Couldn't see anything wrong and it sounded much the same, it just there wasn't any bass. Very uh, unusual to see these black ones, these M500s. And when I was looking at the M250 or 260, they had black versions of those, similar era, with this much finer or slightly finer mesh than the the chrome or silver coloured ones. And they were the M260 or 250, I can't remember which, dot eight. And the dot eight stood for an 80 hertz roll off, I think in the transformer, or maybe a capacitor or something, but I think it's in the transformer, 80 hertz roll off, and that was there for close miking. I don't, re- uh, I don't really like all that, because I think you, you, you just EQ it. Uh, once you're done, once you've set it in the mic, you can't do anything about it much. Uh, they weren't all that popular. People seemed to prefer the ones which were flat. And recently, I'm thinking, well, I'm stuffed here, aren't I? Because it was too late to send it back. And what am I going to say? The person probably didn't know because it sounds fine. If you haven't got a low voice, you don't use anything low, you wouldn't notice. But I'm wondering, and I can't find any account of it at all, if this is an M500.8. I can't find anything that says it exists. I've searched it, but everything about it looks like the 250.8. Obviously, the blackness, the fineness of the grill. Um, and is that why there's a roll off? So actually, maybe it's special. Don't know if any of you know. I can't find anything to say that there's an M five hundred dot eight with an eighty hertz roll off. On one of the silver M five hundreds, I forgot to bring this. Doesn't matter. Use this. It uh, turned up from Austria or somewhere. Unpacked it. As I picked it up, I could hear rattling 
Well, oh no. Very definitely. So I plugged it in. But it sounded fine compared with the others. Got a torch, shone it through. And I could see some sort of housing that was obviously detached. And as I turned it, detached. Not this one, remember, it's the silver one. So I took the top off. And lo and behold, the little plastic housing with a wind blast filter and so on was detached. And underneath was a magnet with the ribbon there. So luckily, you know, nothing can get to the ribbon easily. And there wasn't any foam or anything in there. Um, and it sounded fine. So I thought, yeah, transport again. All that glue gets old. It's been bumped around a bit. And the housing, the glue's deteriorated and the housing came off. So I carefully got some super glue. Stop the housing back on, and uh, done. So again, if you're not a little bit handy with these things, haven't got that kind of mind or experience or something, that could have been another um, problematic thing. I, I just fixed it and gave him the feedback. I'm sure he didn't know. Carrying on then with um, what I'm saying, that's about the limit of my experiences. Seller may not know the mic is faulty. Also, with these older mics, they may be different. You test them, I mean, over the years, the magnets vary, the glues, da da da, da. So you're taking a little bit of a risk, but basically I've found them to be okay. Generally, you look at the outside condition, obviously, if it's been completely mashed up, you might want to be a bit careful because of all that shock. Though one that looks great could have had shock in a case, who knows. So the, the seller may not know <clears throat> that the mic is faulty or different. The mic may be okay, but simply aged, or there may be manufacturer inconsistencies so my recommendations there is to uh, communicate <coughs> communicate through eBay because I keep a record of all that uh, avoid unpleasantness because you don't know and uh, caveat emptor which means buyer beware but generally it's been good. Also, bear in mind, if you buy second-hand microphones, if they're in good condition, you can use them for several years if you don't drop them and there's scarcely any wear going to occur. Then you could always sell them again later at much the same price, if not more, depending on the particular auction fluctuations. Whereas if you buy a new microphone, even if it's pristine and you scarcely used it, obviously, when you come to sell it, simply because it's second-hand, you're, you're going to lose a bit. So um, I hope that's been of uh, some use to you of my experiences maybe of some interest and one more time yes indeed merry christmas and a happy new year <laughs>